Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of F122, a driver career mode here on the channel. It's the final episode of the season and our final race with Haas. Where are we going? That is yet to be determined. It's between Red Bull and McLaren, but there's a way larger story than that. Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc fight for the championship here today. 20 points is the lead Leclerc has on Verstappen. We'll talk more about the mathematics going into the weekend, but here we were landing in Abu Dhabi for this final uh, weekend here on this debut season of this F122 career mode. Uh, landing by at the airport, literally like right beside the circuit. But the stories as well, Sebastian Vettel, four-time world champion, calls it a career at the end of this weekend. And not only him, Valtteri Bontes as well, calling it a career from Formula One uh, as he will be departing from the Alfa Romeo F1 team. Vettel, of course, leaving Aston Martin now as we were ready to get underway here from free practice one. I'm going to miss Sebastian Vettel. This is my final ever uh, race in a current game with Sebastian Vettel uh, in a career mode. So as you guys know, he is my favorite driver in Formula one uh so this is almost a bit of a, a kind of a sad episode here so it is what it is we get ready to go onto the track here in free practice one and uh, a lot weighing on our mind this weekend we have the drivers retiring we have the championship battle going down to the final race however Leclerc is in a pretty decent position uh we have our final race with Haas but we don't know what exactly is our future in terms of what team there's two teams I put a strong pole up and that was determined and whatnot and actually Red Bull was the winner that doesn't always mean we're going to go to Red Bull though and I'll explain that in the future now uh, as well though coming through on this race strategy program going green each time uh, a little bit worse every lap actually I was on the time Delta but we ended up P9 here in F FP1 over our teammate Mick Schumacher our final race alongside him uh, as you can see the rest of that leaderboard there but in between practice and qualifying I had a bit of a chat with Christian Horner I'm going to make it simple Gary do whatever you can to keep Leclerc from moving forward and the Red Bull seat is yours. I expect to see Max winning the title this weekend. Do not disappoint me. Well, there you have it. Christian Horner has almost turned this into a basically Max wins the title, you get a ride. Max loses the title. We are not actually going to offer you a ride, even though we offered you one a few weeks ago uh, in Mexico. So this has taken a, a bit of a turn as we start Q1, and Christian Horner wants me in a Ferrari Alliance car of the Haas to make life difficult for Charles Leclerc to keep him back in the Grand Prix. What if we don't even have the opportunity to do that, though? Uh, but we'll wait and see. It starts uh, with getting, of course, into Q3, potentially, but we were struggling here in Q1. We were down to about P15 as we started our final lap of qualifying here in Q1. Things weren't looking good because that would drop down to P16. We were out and we were slower on time, over a tenth off, trying to find the time, and I just couldn't find it. I was having a really off lap, and all of a sudden, just as qualifying starts, it looks like we're out. We head down in towards the final turn. We find a little bit of time right there, a tenth and a half just about, but we lose it all on the exit. We're going to miss Q2, and we're not the only Haas, as our teammate Mick Schumacher is out as well, as he will be starting in P17 off of the grid. So there you have it, George Russell at the top of the board, and all of a sudden, we have our work cut out for us here. P16, P17, uh, less than a tenth separate the two of us now, as one final lights out remains on the season here in F122 driver career mode. Let's get ready to go to the grid in Abu Dhabi. It's time then for one final race in this year's Formula One World Championship. 2010 saw four drivers in contention for the title coming into this race, with Sebastian Vettel prevailing to become the youngest world champion to date. Is there one last sting in the tail awaiting us today? Well, it's time to find out here at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. The Yas Marina circuit is made up of 3.28 miles of track, featuring 16 corners with two very long straights. The DRS zones going into the heavy braking zones of both turn five and turn seven offer plenty of potential for overtaking. The circuit comes with its fair share of tricky corners, which will certainly test a driver's braking management. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position, and Lando Norris lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Hamilton, P5, 
Pierre Gasly and Leclerc. Perez, they've taken a grid penalty. Ricardo, Golden Boy and Carlos Sainz. Joe, Albon, Fernando Alonso and Ocon. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Mick Schumacher, Vettel, Lance Stroll, they've taken a grid penalty, and Yuki Tsunoda. Latifi and Valtteri Bottas begins the race from the back of the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Well, fortunately for myself, a lot of grid penalties here that moves us up to P9. It is a pretty simple medium to hard compound tire strategy. Max Verstappen starts ahead of Leclerc. Can he make it happen? We're going to find out. Let's get ready to go for this formation lap. Right then, here we go. The formation lap gets underway as the drivers prepare themselves for the final race of another fantastic season. Each driver on the grid will be hoping to end their campaign on as high a note as possible. So as all the cars take their positions on the grid, the teams will be hoping their strategies pay off for the of today's race. The question I'm asking is which teams have got it right which ones have got it horribly wrong? All right, everybody. I uh, appreciate the work all season long. I just want to say thank you one more time, and let's have a proper send-off. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There you have it. One final radio message to the team before the lights out here in Abu Dhabi. Max Verstappen starts in third place. Leclerc a few spots back. It's pretty straightforward. If Leclerc finishes seventh or better... He will win the championship. Now, Max Verstappen can get really close if Leclerc finishes 7th. He might even be able to tie with the fastest lap, but I don't think that's going to happen if he wins even. As it's going to be lights out, we're underway here from Abu Dhabi. Lando Norris leads the way down into turn 1 alongside George Russell. So basically, let's just say it like this. Leclerc, if he finishes 6th uh, or better, it's no matter what, he will be the champion. That will be the easiest kind of uh, way to say it. Now, 7th on down, it's a little bit closer. Now, as the best Max Verstappen could do is 2 points uh, to Leclerc if Leclerc finishes six in Verstappen wins the race and gets the fastest lap he would still lose by two points so Max Verstappen no matter what 20 points below coming into this Grand Prix he is in a must win scenario that sprint in Brazil might be what makes the difference here now Hamilton alongside George Russell into the chicane they're going to be side by side Lando Norris loves what he sees behind him a great start for uh, the British driver it's British drivers one two three then it's Max Verstappen with a uh, as well, an Alfa Tori up here in the mix, but hold on, here comes Lewis Hamilton again and Max Verstappen. They both have runs on Russell. Verstappen is going to send one up the inside of Hamilton and George down into the long sweeping left hander. Verstappen passes Hamilton. A great move right there. You can tell he knows what the situation is. He is here to fight and he is here to move himself forward. George Russell settles into second place now in front of that Red Bull driver. Max Verstappen, our teammate in the background there, you can see a Mick Schumacher fighting with Yuki Sonoda as well. The rest of the drivers at the back and unfortunately uh, Valtteri Bottas quarter ways down the order to start his final Grand Prix uh, as we come through to end this first and opening lap of 29 laps it's a pretty lengthy Grand Prix currently P9 so we started P9 hold on to P9 Leclerc and P7 right in front of us now so I expect to see him kind of just trying to manage what's happening in this race he was way faster than Pierre Gasly but was currently struggling and I had Carlos Sainz as well as Fernando Alonso behind myself. There goes Ricardo making a move on the inside of Leclerc. That's not what you want to see. Leclerc, if he finishes 8th and Verstappen wins, 
Verstappen will be the champion. With the fastest lap, I think, is what he would need uh, to for sure clinch it here. Look at this. Leclerc's not done battling. He's going to go to the outside of Gasly and Ricardo down into this chicane. And Gasly hops up over the curb. We're okay, Leclerc making moves now, trying to solidify his championship at this point now. And I'm wondering, you know, after what Christian Horner told us, how in the world does he expect me to make it difficult on Leclerc? I can't even keep up with him. I'm behind him. What do you expect me to do to get this Red Bull seat at this point? Because look at this lap four and... Uh, Leclerc did actually not win that fight with Ricardo, so he settles into P7, but I was dropping like a rock compared to these two cars that are, well, quite simply way faster than this Haas, so definitely uh, a little bit frustrating for myself, and the cars behind would lose contact because they were battling so hard, so I quickly found myself on lap 7 kind of on an island of my own. Leclerc actually battling with Ricardo still for that spot to put him into P6, and he wants that P6 because he knows that's the most comfortable spot to just guarantee the championship. George Russell, lap 8, had run down. Lando Norris made a move up the inside. Couldn't quite pull it off right there. Verstappen loves what he sees in the front of him because that's going to allow him to close up on both of these drivers as well. And George going to go back to the right-hand side here of the McLaren down towards a long, sweeping left-hander. Who's going to come out on top of this battle? Now, it's going to be the car on the outside with the momentum Norris struggling on grip down to second place goes Norris in the McLaren Ricardo his teammate down to seventh place again however does Verstappen even have the pace right now to get these two it's going to be interesting to watch pit stops they are not far away Verstappen might have to consider short pitting if he wants to find a way to get to the lead of this Grand Prix because I think it's going to be too hard to overtake those two cars in front of him uh but Let's sit, wait and see what happens here. And, well, we come through to lap 12. And the pit window uh, was about to be open. Leclerc was now holding on comfortably to P6 over Daniel Ricciardo. So he knows no matter what, where he is right now. He will be the champion uh, no matter what happens, no matter what Max Verstappen does. And Max Verstappen, lap 14, he's going to pit before anybody else to put on the hard compound tire. The first and hopefully for him, only pit stop of the day. I would follow through as well moments later to come in to put my set of hard compound tires on. But Russell and Lando Norris, so they stayed out. So we are going to wait and see what happens there with those two drivers. Is Verstappen going to be able to get the lead by short pitting or undercutting, I should say? as I nearly ran into the barrier right there and put the car on the wall, but uh, Schumacher just in front of myself as well as Carlos Sainz. Uh, but we were getting ready to see uh, both Russell and Norris head down into the pit lane here in a few moments, and here they are, lap 15, now a lap later, they are in. So what? let's wait and see. It's going to be a very solid stop for George Russell. Lando Norris had a solid stop as well. He's going to come out just behind the McLaren. But the question is, of course, Max Verstappen. What's the situation here? There's a long drive out of the pit lane in Abu Dhabi. you got to go under the ground through a tunnel. And then, of course, you make the speed up and head back onto the circuit. Verstappen looks like he's going to get past Lando Norris and will he get past George Russell? It's going to be close, but no, it's going to be George Russell coming out in front of Verstappen. Verstappen knows he's got the tires warmed up compared to Russell. He's going to have DRS. Russell's going to have no help at all. This could be Verstappen's one and only chance to give himself a fighting chance to win the World Drivers' Championship here tonight in Abu Dhabi halfway through this Grand Prix and he needs Leclerc to drop a few positions but most importantly, he needs to win the race and here he goes to the right-hand side of Russell down in towards the chicane and it's a heavy braking zone maybe a little bit of contact too hard to tell right there Verstappen doesn't really make it easy on Russell he takes the lead of the Grand Prix but now it's George Russell with the DRS and although his tires aren't as warm as Verstappen's his straight line speed is looking pretty good and he's going to go back to the right hand side here Lando Norris in the background loves what he sees as well they continue side by side who's going to come out on top of this battle Verstappen is going to pull it off he takes the lead back and wow there goes Lando Norris now into the mix I don't think the battling is done yet between those drivers here. We still have 14 laps to go, so plenty of time for things to develop here in this Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Could there be a safety car? We haven't seen any retirements yet. I myself had settled into now P8, and I was still on an island of my own because the cars behind us kept battling, and Lonzo and Ocon kept swamping positions like crazy, and I didn't have enough speed for anybody in front of me. So this was turning into the most boring Grand Prix of the season for me, but the battles continue up front. Lap 20, George Russell, he's going to try the same line that Verstappen did to pass him in the chicane a few laps prior. Verstappen needs to fight for his life right now. And Lando Norris, he's going to enjoy this too because he's right behind both of them. DRS in favor of Verstappen and Norris. He's going to go to the right-hand side of Russell there. Lando trying to go the long way around of both of these drivers down into the left-hander. He might pull this off and a little bit of contact maybe right there. They are not 
not making it easy on Verstappen, even given the championship situation. Norris to the lead again of this race. What a pass from Lando, who's going to choke it all away and locks up there, and he's going to go from third to first to first to third. So, nice job, Lando, as you get a great helicopter view. What a battle for the lead as Verstappen is back out in front, but Leclerc still runs P6, which means it's just quite simply not going to be enough, even with winning the race and if he got the fastest lap, Max Verstappen is going to come up about three points short of the Drivers' Championship given the current finishing order. Five laps to go, nothing appears to be changing. Now, uh, same for myself, you know, nothing's changing here. I'm 13 seconds ahead of the Alpines who continue to scrap it out and, and you know, we are 17 seconds, 18 seconds behind Ricardo. This was the most lonely Grand Prix of my life, you know, it really nothing happening here for myself and uh, overall other than a great battle for the lead, not much happening in the Grand Prix in general here. Abu Dhabi is very hit or miss in the F1 game. Sometimes you have some banger races, sometimes you have pretty calm races uh, like this one right here. But the final few laps of my tenure at Haas, as well as the final few laps of Sebastian Vettel's and Valtteri Bottas' career are underway, and Leclerc just needs to hang on for a few more laps in P6, and he is the World Drivers' Champion. Two laps to go at this point. Things are looking absolutely tremendous for the Ferrari driver, who made one heck of a comeback in the final quarter of the season. It looked like it was Max Verstappen's championship for, you know, the first, I would say, 18 rounds of the season. In the final few rounds, Leclerc has closed the gap, used the sprint race in Brazil to his advantage to make up even more points and tie the points, and and just think about this. Max Verstappen started the Brazilian Sprint Weekend three points, I think it was, above Charles Leclerc. Leclerc gained three points. Verstappen, by winning this race right here and Leclerc being P6, will lose the championship by three points. Unbelievable. They would tie if we didn't have that sprint race. And you've got to be kidding me. Why do we have sprint races, man? We don't even need them when you have this happen. But unbelievable scenes it has been in this championship fight. Max Verstappen, unfortunately, is not going to have enough here from the looks of it. He is still leading over George Russell as well as Lando Norris. As he comes through the final turn, he needs something to go wrong for Leclerc within a couple of seconds. Verstappen wins in Abu Dhabi. He does everything he needs to do, but it's still not enough. Charles Leclerc rounds the final turn he will win the world drivers championship and back up the ferrari constructors leclerc is a world champion of formula one and as well we cross the line in p8 but more importantly than myself sebastian vettel and valtteri bontas on their final laps in formula one it's been an incredible career it's not the day they were both looking for fernando alonso holding on to the final point over vettel who's only a few car lengths behind it's not going to be enough for the four-time world champion but an incredible career and thank you sebastian vettel now as valtteri bontas was rounding the final few corners a disappointing day for him in p15 but still a proper send-off sebastian vettel driver of the day leclerc champion let's see the celebration Incredible year for Formula One, and our drivers have all pushed themselves this season, making it one of the most compelling years of racing in history. There can only be one champion, however, and here they are now, our new Formula One World Drivers' Champion. Victory today then, but bittersweet emotions, I'm sure, as the championship slips through their fingers. Even so, what a fantastic final race of the season this was. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Well, you know, Max Verstappen, he did everything that he needed to do. It just wasn't enough, all because of that sprint race in, in Brazil. But not only that, you, of course, simply quite look at, you know, other moments throughout the season where he might have lost a couple of points and even the same for Charles Leclerc. But Verstappen was in control of this championship right until the final couple of rounds and it unfortunately all came crumbling down. I mean, you know, heartbreaking for him, but at the same time, Awesome for Charles Leclerc, who finally becomes a world champion here in Formula One. And, well, it wasn't easy for him. He had to claw his way back into the fight and bring Ferrari back 
And, well, they made it happen. Ferrari overtook Red Bull late in the season, then the Constructors and Leclerc overtake Verstappen going into the final Grand Prix. Verstappen had the championship for, you know, 90% of the season. Uh, as you can see, the finishing order, Vettel in P11, Bontas there in P15. We'll take a look at the official final standings. Latifi, one lap down, by the way. Shocker there in the Williams. His final race, I don't know. Maybe he will be back in Williams. Maybe some Williams news on the way in the offseason episode. But you see there, Leclerc wins by three points. That's all it is. Three points over Verstappen. So close. Uh, I mean, imagine if he finished a couple of spots lower. Uh, who, what could have been for Verstappen even, but uh, Leclerc gets the job done. We end P11 on the season. I'm pretty happy with that. We beat our teammate of Mick Schumacher, and now we wonder, of course, where is our future at? We're going to find out in the next episode, or you will find out in the next episode, where my future is in Formula 1. As well, Constructors' Championship, we end up P6 as Ferrari are at the top of the board. That's going to wrap it up. We have an off-season video coming up in the next one. We will go over the retirements, a few driver changes, new liveries that are all modded as well. Thank you guys for the support this series. Let's head back into the air. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day, everybody.